The ear can be divided into three sections. The outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The middle ear is an air-filled chamber that is connected to the nose and throat via a channel called the eustachian tube. Normally, air moves through this tube to equalize the pressure in the middle ear with that of the air around us. This is especially important when there are large changes in the external air pressure, such as in flying or scuba diving. For example, as an airplane rises in altitude, the air pressure in the cabin gradually drops. This causes the pressure in the middle ear to seem relatively high, and the eardrum bulges slightly outward. When the pressure difference between the cabin and the middle ear reaches about 15 millimeters of mercury, the eustachian tubes open with a popping sensation, and air is released from the middle ears. Under normal circumstances, this happens about once every 500 to 1,000 feet during ascent. Conversely, as the plane descends and the pressure in the cabin increases, the middle ear pressure seems relatively low and the eardrum is pulled slightly inward. Now, when the eustachian tubes open, air rushes into the middle ears to equalize the pressure. Sometimes during descent, a manual technique must be used to equalize middle ear pressure. For example, swallowing, chewing gum, or blowing the nose can help open the eustachian tubes if the pressure difference becomes uncomfortable. Illnesses such as colds and ear infections can cause the membranes surrounding the eustachian tubes to swell. This may make pressure equalization more difficult, producing pain in the middle ear. Looking for information, going on health boards and trying to find out if there is something that Bob could do to make it better, tell his doctors, whatever, and we've noticed that there is a relationship between bar uh, barometric pressure and how he's feeling, and we didn't realize it until uh, we were, Bob was feeling really bad some days and not so bad others, and we couldn't figure out why. So once we started checking um, health boards and information on the internet, that's how we came up with the idea that maybe his eustachian tubes, because they are so bad, that it's been affected by the barometric pressure on days when it's a radical change. Atmospheric pressure at the North and South Pole are greater because the air is cold and dense. As you move closer to the equator, the air is less dense because it is warmer. This is why Winnipeg has radical swings several times during a day and especially during the winter months, whereas it's much more pleasant closer to the equator in many locations. Since insulation is strongest when the sun is directly overhead, the equator is heated more strongly than other places on Earth. Heated air rises and cold air sinks resulting in low surface pressure at the equator and high surface pressure at the poles. The engine of low latitude atmospheric circulation is the Hadley cell. Convection occurs at the thermal equator. Poleward moving air is forced to descend. This produces two subtropical belts of high pressure centered at about 30 degrees latitude. Surface winds spiral out from the subtropical highs, moving toward the equator as well as the mid-latitudes. Above 30 degrees latitude, wind patterns are more complex in a belt of conflict between polar and subtropical air known as the polar front. The latitude at which the sun is directly overhead changes with the seasons. Since Hadley cell circulation is driven by this heating, we can expect elements of the Hadley cell to migrate as well. At high altitude, air moves without the drag of surface friction. This geostrophic wind moves along rather than across the pressure gradient. The westerly flow of upper air frequently forms undulations called Rossby waves. Warm air pushes poleward, 
while troughs of cold air brought south are pinched off, leaving pools of cool air in the mid latitudes. Okay, these are articles and graphs and charts that uh, I pulled off the internet. Uh, this next section is um, just some research we were doing trying to compare Bob's symptoms to maybe what other people have. It was interesting to see that there's actually a lot of people out there with the same problem. Stems from eustachian tube disorder and then for some reason barrel ear kicks in and it exacerbates the condition that you already have. The next one is um, the same thing. We kept looking and looking for symptoms and health boards and things like that and uh, there was actually a lot of useful information and it was also good to know that you're not the only one out there feeling that bad and thinking you're maybe going crazy when you're not when it's just a lot of pressure in your head and your ears from uh, eustachian tube disorder and then exacerbated again by uh, barometric pressure. The next one is just information that we've, uh, more research that we've done, and this is actually quite funny because he just suggests that you lock yourself indoors when uh, the air pressure gets crazy, but um, it's from a meteorologist and there's a lot of good explanations about things, but I don't think we're going to go to that extreme and just lock Bob in a, in a room somewhere so that he'll feel better. There's got to be a better way to, to do things. next one is again um, talking about barometric pressure and what it is and what happens and things like that so it's uh, a lot of good information you can find online too to learn about uh, about what's bothering you and you know that you're not alone other people are out there too This is a health board that uh, we put online for Bob's uh, eustachian tube disorder. Um, we wanted to know if there was other people out there with the same problem, and obviously there was. We did get one reply back, but uh, we had been on other health boards. Um, I'll show you later that people talk about their problem too. So this was good to get this kind of information. These are websites that talk about eustachian tube disorder, uh, barrel ear, things like that. Uh, when uh, Bob wasn't feeling good, we went back online and did some more research under different headings and found a whole bunch of websites. These, I just put the websites down so you can go on them yourselves and check it out. Uh, they're quite intense and a few pages, so hopefully you can look at them and find something interesting there. This graph shows the sea level pressure over the last 24 hours in Winnipeg, the day July 25th to July 26th. The weather was quite unstable at this time and you can see from the graph that the barometric pressure is quite radical in rising and falling. The next graph shows the sea level pressure for the last two weeks in Winnipeg. Now this is crazy because if you look at it, you can see that it has major lows and major highs. Um, again, probably showing a lot of unstable in Winnipeg, which makes it hard for Bob to function because his ear pressure is so bad and he spends a lot of time in bed on these days, unfortunately. Next two graphs, one is for January 2013, the other is for February 2013, and again, it's a monthly graph and uh, recordings of the barometric pressure during the winter months, which is even much worse than in the summertime, because you have the cold fronts coming in from the south and from the north and uh, the Arctic, and it gets pretty bad. This was, is for February 2013, and as in January, like I was saying, you can see that the pressure is quite all over the place. 
Um, the numbers show too the rising and the falling of the pressure and again it's due to the location of Winnipeg which is affected much by um, the Arctic and from the Colorado lows that come in. The next one is for July and again it's pretty crazy but because it was a fairly decent day it's not too crazy. Um, however, when there's lots of rain and lots of uh, storms coming through Winnipeg, which it was this summer, the barometric pressure is all over the place. And again, Bob is much affected by it because of uh, the pressure in his ears is changing constantly and driving him crazy, basically. Um, these next couple of slides are from a website called Timetric, I guess it is, and it's really good because it shows different graph layouts for uh, atmospheric pressure in different cities. This one's Winnipeg. If you take the high and the low, you can see that it's actually quite drastic. And this is over, um, well, starting, I guess, 20, 2009, it looks like going right to um, today. Uh, the next one is from Geek Hill. As you get closer to the equator, the barometric pressure is more stable, and you can see that even though there's a lot of up and downs, if you take your top number and your bottom number, the change is like there's not a lot of change. And this is over the same time period again. It's actually a really good um, website. The next one is same sort of thing. I couldn't get a, a time metric for Managua, but it's close to the border too. And if you just go across and you look at the air pressure readings, you can see in a day that it's so my, uh, minute that it would hardly make any difference in air pressure or um, it would hardly affect anybody who had um, eustachian tube disorder. So that's just kind of learning that the closer you get to the equator, the better the air pressure is. This other one is also in uh, Nicaragua, the Rivas, and as you can see, and compared to the other charts, that there is hardly any change whatsoever for the last one, two, three, you know, three and a half years kind of thing. So this is kind of the idyllic place you would want to live if you have really bad eustachian tube disorder. The next one is Belize again. I'm trying to find places that are close to the equator without actually living on the equator and places that you might like to go and visit and do a little testing and find out how your ear pressure changes by being in these different um, locations that are closer to the border. I mean, I'm sorry, the equator. And the last one, too, didn't have a time metric, but this size is also along the same lines as Belize. It's actually part of Belize. It's in degrees K. And if you look, too, at air pressure and go right across, you can see that the change is so minute. I bought a digital endoscope on the internet so I could take a video of what my eardrum was doing every day and create a history. Please reply to this website. If you have any information regarding eustachian tube dysfunction and geographical barometric pressure.